So after he was gone is when you started getting involved in everything. Yeah. What year did 600 start? 09. 09. And uh, who started 600? D-Thang. D-Thang? Yeah. Okay. D-Thang was my dear homies. I got him right here. R.I.P. Devon. He started that. Him and Lil Boo. Oh, him and Lil Boo? Yeah, oh, okay. Lil Boo. He did too. Both of them did. They oh. were best friends and shit. Okay, and and so these were like your older homies? Were they your age or? I mean, like they was like niggas that I knew, like looked up to. But like these was my homies though. They weren't like a another bigger crowd of niggas who I didn't hang with or something. Like these was they was like my age. Like Big Thing probably would be like 25, 26 if he was alive. Lubu would have been like twenty six, you know. But it's like yeah, these was like big bro now. You know what I'm saying? Like they weren't just like niggas like them. You know, them the big homies. Like no, they was big bro now. I mimicked and I learned everything from them. You know what I'm saying? Like. I tried to mimic the street shit, at least everything. I mimicked it from them. Oh, okay, okay. What um what was your friendship like with the little boo? Um, Lil Boo shit. Lil Boo was the one that I got close to first. He basically like taught me everything that I know. And and D Thing, like actually when me and D Thing first met, we had a problem with each other. But Lil Boo was like the nigga that told me everything, like, man, when I first got in the streets. I had a lot of the habits that I had to break and shit because I just was just a kid. Like, I used to walk with my head down, you know what I'm saying? I used to, like, do all type of this slow-ass walking and shit, like, walk with my head down. The slow walking was, like, one of the most biggest pet peeves he had because he's like, bro, it's war out here. You can't be walking with your head down and shit, and you walk slow as hell. If you walking on the street, like, on the main street, bro, you need to be walking fast as hell. You don't even need to be walking on the main street. Hit gangways, hit cuts, jump gates, find the different area ways to maneuver and get places, bro. You don't need to be out like that. You know what I'm saying? And I just had to learn that shit. And he just taught me everything. Like he was just teaching me hella shit, bitches, anything. You know what I'm saying? And then with me and me and Lil we was just like the same type of motherfucker, low key. Like temper, you feel what I'm saying? Wild as hell. So it's like me coming up under him, it was just like it was perfect for me because he basically turned me into a better street nigga, which is basically a better version of myself if you're a street guy. Yeah, yeah. What, what are some other things that, that they would teach you back then? I mean, shit, they just taught you everything. Shit, like how to, how to get them at, you know, maneuver and shit through the streets and, you know, when certain situations hit, how to react, you know what I'm saying? How to get them, like shit, straps, all that type of shit, how to do this, shit, niggas going, teaching off how to go on drills, all type of shit. You know, because I wasn't like a drug selling gang banger. That was never my thing. Even though that was like my people's thing, that wasn't my thing. So I just was never I, I was focused on the other shit around that was going on in the streets. I never sold drugs. So I never wanted to learn nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to know about all the other hot shit. Okay, well, what about D-Thing? Can you tell me a little bit about him? Shit, he, him, they, they the same. Like, that's why they was like that. Like, them niggas, they don't sell drugs and none of that shit. They was straight hotheads trying to pop some outrageous, gang-banging tough guys. And they both probably weighed 130, 40 pounds wet all the way up, even until they were getting older. Like, they was some, they was some little scrawny niggas for the most part, but... They was tough. They was hard. You know what I'm saying? They was respected, feared, all that. You know what I'm saying? And me coming up, I used to like, yeah, bro, them turn, I gotta get like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what I admire, shit like that. What, what was the effect on 600 when, when they died? I mean, see, they died so many, so like four years apart. But uh -huh. it's like, D Thing was kind of like one of the first bodies we that came. He came out the body which is our first dead homie we ever had. You know what I'm saying? That shit came in two, uh, July 2011. And then in September he came and like Baldy, like Baldy was my big brother too. You know what I'm saying? But I seen Baldy every day. We was on the block together. But Baldy was like a different type of nigga. Anybody that like, if you watch this interview, any of us that know Baldy, know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Baldy and Deep Thing was just like two different type of niggas. Baldy was an original gang member. Like he was one of the first in that area, period, his shit go back further than all of ours, you know what I'm saying? So, and on top of that, it's like Baldy was kinda on a more, he will knock you out and he don't do a lot of talking, you know what I'm saying? Baldy, you know, cool, 
calm, collective, but he a real street nigga and he respected, you know what I'm saying? He just chill. The thing rowdy, you know what I'm saying? He gang involved. Baldy was gang banging too. That was our homie from the block, you know what I'm saying? He 600, B block, all that shit, that was that. But it's just, he was just chill. He was more relaxed, you know what I'm saying? He was more to himself too, you know what I'm saying? Quiet, D thing, it was like, not to say like it had different, like 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 it was a bigger or smaller effect because of how he was. It was just like, D thing, when it hit, it fucked with a lot of the younger crowd. When Baldy hit, it hurted all of us, but it hurted the older niggas way more, you know what I'm saying? Because Baldy, like, when you coming up, all the older niggas that was, that's probably like almost 39, they was had a lot longer to be around him and be closer to him. You feel me? I'm saying so. D thing like he the younger crowd and like when you a young nigga like a lot of the young niggas didn't even one one even just coming in to this game banging shit to 2010, 2011. So when Baldy died, it's like we just met him, you know. But well, for a lot of niggas it was like that. It wasn't like that for me. But like a lot of niggas they like man we we ain't get to know Baldy or we won around Baldy doing the shit we was doing. We didn't get that from Baldy. We ain't learn that from Baldy. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. D thing was like, damn, it's like our mentor. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, this nigga who showed us how to get down, how to stand 10 toes. Nigga, he showed us shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Baldy was one of them niggas, like, he was real game member, but he ain't the motherfucker we trying to, like, run behind. You know what I'm saying? He was real respected. You know what I'm saying? I got to make sure I word it in a way where I don't sound like I'm disrespecting him. It's like he very respected. He very, you know, like he was one of them guys for sure. But D thing was a nigga who the young niggas my age, we mimicked him. We tried to learn from him. He showed us shit. He played the role in our life a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like literally grabbed our hand type shit. So that's how it was. It was, it left a, it was crazy that we didn't know how to take that shit. Like D thing, the nigga that when shit happened, nigga, he won first one over there. Now, Something happened to him. Now we got to go over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to really step our shit up. So, you know, it's just, it was tough. We still was, didn't even learn, know really how to cope with the shit from Baldy. And we lost him. And then we lost another real game. And like two weeks later. So now we just really, our heads fucked up. We 14 years old. And we like, damn, bro. We ain't just even had no dead homies two months ago. And a month and a half ago, we ain't even have no dead homies. From the end of July to mid-September, three of them gone. And we just like, damn, bro, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit crazy. It'd be a hard pill to swallow. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is, that three dead homies in a, within a within couple a, months. Within 40 days. Damn. Three dead homies within like 40 days. You know what I'm saying? So this was like 2011, you said? Yeah, this 2011. So this was when it was... It was really yeah, going like, on. Like it's like when everything first jumped out from ten to eleven, like the shit six hundred we came we what we was in oh nine. But between like two it was a lot of rap beef shit going on in twenty ten, you know what I'm saying? One but it, we niggas was warm, but we didn't have no dead homies. Other niggas did, but we didn't, you know what I'm saying? Twenty eleven was when we first felt that strike. Like, damn nigga. You know what I'm saying? We felt it. And it was it was hard. You know what I'm saying? And we didn't know how to cope. And then it's like, nigga, we lost two more. Basically back to back. Right. Like within a fucking 10, 12 day thing, we lose two more of the guys. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, back then, it's hitting like not no goofies. Like a lot of niggas nowadays, because so many niggas that was really in this shit heavy, they didn't got killed or locked up. That it's a lot of the goofies getting killed nowadays in the street shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas that just claim shit but never really put in no work, never really sold no drugs. But back then, most niggas that was out here, you played a role in this shit. Damn near a big role or a major role. And it's like, so when we losing three of the guys, it's like, damn, these the guys, guys. We just were like, damn, we felt that pain. That shit was some shit we ain't never felt then. Shit, February of the next year, so it goes, it's this September now. Shit, four and a half months later, there go another real game member. That was mm -hmm. like Baldy. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, nah, it's like, damn, gee, like we really gotta 
Like, it's really like that now. You feel me? Like, it's full. From, it's basically a six-month stint. Like, from July to February of the next month. Yeah. Four dead homies. So it's, it's like we really, we really was feeling it. We was feeling it hard at, at this time. We feeling it hard. Then I'm getting these calls because I end up having to go to high school. All this shit happened in, like, my freshman year of high school. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in high school in another town in my city. Like, I'm not even in Chicago. I'm in high school in, in somewhere in Joliet. And it's like everything that's happening is happening where I'm going. Like, I ain't, ain't nothing even. Like, I'm steady at school. I'm getting calls about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm in school. Like, I don't even know how to cope with this shit. Like, I, that shit was fucking me up. Like, my freshman year of high school, I stayed in trouble. Like, I couldn't. You know what I'm saying? And it just was like. And it's like I was sent there to stay out of shit like that, you know what I'm saying? But like I couldn't, like I was just I couldn't, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it was just it was fucking me up in school and I was so far away from the action. I was going home, getting into shit, you know what I'm saying? And then it just ultimately lead me to drop <laughs> drop out of high school completely. 